The ancient Airavateshwara temple built a thousand years ago contains the world's oldest optical illusion carved in stone. Was it just meant to be a work of art or does it contain a much deeper message? Let us take a look. In the ancient city of Kumbakonam stands the magnificent Airavateshwara temple. This ancient marvel was built by Raja Raja Chola the second who came into power in the year 1146 during the reign of raja raja the second the mighty chola empire had already reached the beginning of its decline but their architectural skills were still intact raja raja the second was a patron of the arts he commissioned the building of this temple but the spot on which this temple was to be built was already considered sacred even during his era this grand temple was much much larger in its heyday originally this temple had seven concentric enclosures sapta vidis surrounding it today only the innermost enclosure survives there is a shrine dedicated to shakti in the form of periyanayagi amman right next to this temple which would have been a part of the original larger complex the completion of the temple coincided with the time that the chola might begin to wane the later years saw the pandya kings come into power in this region after defeating the cholas the pandyas gained control of the temple and its surrounding lands but they too contributed to the expansion of this temple as attested by inscriptions so the temple still was a beacon of attraction in the ancient world but this too was to be interrupted in the 1300s the armies of malik kafur from the delhi sultanate had already sacked madurai the madurai sultanate was established and the armies of the madurai sultanate waged wars on many of the kings in this region so some scholars think that much of the surroundings of this temple might have been destroyed by these conflicts around the year 1378 the vijayanagara kings defeated the madurai sultanate and regained control of these lands and did their bit in restoring this temple even after all the destruction this temple stands as an example of the architectural prowess of the ancients numerous carvings representing everything from the 63 nayan mars to the river goddesses like ganga and kaveri are showcased in this temple one of the carvings stands out from the rest and this carving is what might be the world's oldest optical illusion in this you can see both the skill of the sculptor and the heights of the philosophical knowledge they wanted to showcase when you look at this carving what you initially see is two animal bodies that of a bull and that of an elephant but their heads seem to be intermixed and overlapped but this is an optical illusion focus now on the left and you will see a nandi a bull now focus on the right and you will see an elephant why was this sculpted into this temple before we understand this we need to look at the legend behind this temple many ancient temples were built or developed around sacred spots that had legends associated with them this temple is linked to airavata the celestial flying white elephant which was the chariot of the god indra so airavata is a great grand white elephant that can fly not only does he carry indra across the skies but he is also an able companion to indra as he fights his enemies one day Sage Durvasa in his wanderings comes across Indra seated on the Airavata he gives a garland made of sacred flowers to Indra now incidentally this garland has been given to Sage Durvasa by the celestial maidens Indra distracted by the heavenly opulence and the celestial glories casually places the garland on Airavata the strong fragrance of the flowers attracts a swarm of bees airavata tries hard to ward off the bees with his trunk but in that process the garland falls and airavata 
frustrated tramples upon the flowers. This greatly angers the sage Durvasa, and he curses both Airavata and Indra. Both of them lose their celestial splendor, and in fact, according to some Puranas, this curse led to all of the devas losing their power. There are many places said to be the spots where Airavata venerated God Shiva to regain his original splendor. And the Dharasuram temple is believed to be one such spot. And this is the reason why this temple is called Airavateshwara. Of course, there is a very deep symbolism to this narrative as well. Indra is the king of the devas, but at the deepest level, Indra symbolizes the divine mind and the senses that enable the self, the Atma, to function in the material world. One actually understands the external world only through the senses. Airavata, the white elephant, is the Vahana, the vehicle of Indra. So this then becomes a chariot of the senses, which represents the body, which is nothing but the self, the Atma, covered by Ahamkara, the Ainas, and the body actually carries the karmendriyas, the organs of sense, and the jnanendriya, organs of knowledge. It also carries the vasanas and samskaras, one's latent desires and tendencies accrued over many, many cycles of birth and death. So when functioning in the world, the senses are always drawn outside. If one is distracted by the senses, one risks deviating from the path towards liberation. The head of the elephant symbolizes the memory that helps one understand this and enables them to conquer the cycle of birth and death. The elephant is a gentle creature but endowed with great strength and memory. This is how one needs to navigate the material world. For these reasons, the elephant is also associated with the god Ganesha who is a master of intellect and worldly wisdom, Siddhi and Buddhi. As a side note, some traditions also believe that it is the head of Airavata that is affixed onto Ganesha. Now, the elephant is the chariot of the senses. In fact, keeping in line with this fact, the entire Agra Mandaba of this temple is shaped like a chariot. This symbolizes dharmic navigation of the material world. So, in one part, this ancient carving represents the conduct that is needed to navigate the material world in order to move towards liberation. Now, to the second part, the bull. The Nandi represents the individual self, the Jivatma. This again is a very well-known symbolism and you can see it even today where every Shiva temple has a Nandi facing the Shiva Linga. So, this carving shows that only when the chariot of the senses and the self are in union with each other and focused towards understanding the true nature of reality can one progress towards liberation. While navigating the material world in a dharmic way, one should focus on understanding the true nature of reality. This alone can make one progress towards liberation. If one is distracted by the senses, it leads to the metaphorical downfall from the path towards liberation. So this carving here serves as an important lesson for both the king and the layperson, especially for a king. It reiterates the need to navigate the material, take care of those around you, defend against negative forces, all the while upholding dharma and focusing on the true nature of reality. For centuries, this ancient carving stands the test of time only to transmit this dharmic message to those who can discern. As always, the known is a drop and the unknown an ocean. Peace.